<laughs> All right. Well, it's a grim reality of the news business. When people are mowed down by madmen, the press rushes in to cover the carnage. But instead of the usual even-handed coverage about gun laws, some in the media are saying enough. Adam has more. After a gunman killed nine people at a community college in Roseburg, Oregon, People magazine delved into the shooter's past, the lives of his victims, and the recovery of the survivors. But People also did something unexpected, publishing contact information for every member of Congress and urging readers to get in touch. I think about mass shootings every time I'm on a train or in a theater when the lights go down or when I see children in a classroom. People editorial director Jess Cagle says that while he doesn't know what Congress should do, it's clearly not doing enough. Let them know that the routine responses that they've always given us are just not going to cut it from now on. Some readers smelled opportunism and bias. But out, said one commenter, gun laws do nothing except make idiots feel better. But another cheered, thank you, people, for the courage to stand up against gun violence. For the record, people isn't alone. After Roseburg, newspapers around the country took strong stands of their own. Are we at a tipping point? Maybe not, because all this outrage is nothing new. Unless we figure out a way to make sure that something like Newtown never happens again, uh, we're not the country that we once were. And even if the media decides gun violence is an issue without two sides, like it already has on global warming and same-sex marriage, it may not matter. And I really feel that his visit here is uh, completely to support his gun control agenda. That's the father of Anna Boylan, who survived the Roseburg shooting. If his own daughter's brush with death didn't change his mind, it's doubtful that the press will. I don't know, Adam. I, I think you may be wrong about that. I mean, there's always going to be deniers, you know, Holocaust deniers, everything like that. But when the media decides it's not going to get, on the one hand, on the other hand, have one person on the left, one hand on the right, and still debating in this day and age, you know, global warming or same-sex marriage, I think it may be to the point where enough media organizations say, you know what, there's not really two even hands on this. You know, the, the newspapers that took a, a stand on this, um, they spanned the entire country. The New York Daily mm -hmm. News ran a very aggressive uh, cover right after the Roseburg shootings. Um, so did papers uh, in the middle of the country. There was a paper in Oregon that had a very aggressive cover. Editorial pages saying this status quo is untenable You know, in Arizona, in Missouri. So it's not just an East Coast, West Coast uh, sort of thing. But I think that I actually just disagree. I think that the, the sort of passionate support from people who see any reduction in their ability to acquire and own any type of weapon, I think it's so deeply held for a big, big chunk of the country that we tend to estimate, uh, underestimate that you could have the media as a whole unanimous that this status quo is terrible, needs to be changed, and it really wouldn't. No, but they don't have to treat it equally. They find that people think oh, that way. Right, that's, right. What I'm, that's the point I'm saying. There are always going to be Holocaust well, and I don't, I don't see a problem with saying whatever the answer is, something yeah. is wrong. That when you look yeah. at the rate of you know, gun deaths in the U.S. compared to other mm -hmm. developed countries, we are so There's heads no and shoulders above. So well, I guess I agree with you. Well, you know, who's they? Who's the media here? Let, let's be careful about falling into that trap. I don't have any problem with People Magazine taking an advocacy position. People Magazine has never uh, been blurred in my mind with the New York Times or, uh, or the Associated Press or anything like that. Um, I, my only concern, as, as someone who doesn't like guns, is that I want to see at least those parts of the media that do focus on straight-ahead journalism and fact-finding, I'd like to see them continue to probe what's going on here. Why do politicians no longer refer to gun control but talk about uh, what's the euphemism they use? Uh, common sense gun regulation. Common sense gun <laughs> regulation. Euf the way euphemisms and the political yeah. role they play, that's an interesting aspect here that can be probed without necessarily taking a position. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the narrow question of whether people is using its platform well or using it poorly, I don't think, as John said, I don't think people look to People Magazine for hard-hitting or unbiased political reporting. You know, you could argue that a lot of the uh, the stories that they do of people who are victims of violence of other forms, people who are victims of diseases, that there's an implicit advocacy that's built into that. Um, you know, this is in some ways an extension of that. The one thing I do think is, is cuts in the other direction is that they hedged their bets a little bit. They got 95% of the way of saying, look, call your congressman and talk about gun control. But they said, no, call your congressman and talk about something. So Common uh, sense gun common sense regulation. Gu but not even, not even that. Yeah. You know, it didn't just, say what to say. Yeah, just if you're upset about this topic, But it was call implicit. Them. It was implicit. Yeah. 
But uh, you know, but it's you're certainly. You're right, they did cover themselves. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's themselves. mental health, and we yeah, need yeah. to pay more attention to that. So it certainly doesn't contribute to this mass media, you know, de, uh, you know, delegitimization mm. of, of guns mm. if they're hedging their bets. Well, People Magazine is actually an outlier on this because the Washington Post has done a study that shows that since Sandy Hook, certainly to, the, to date, the worst outbreak of gun violence we've seen and, and hopefully it will stay the worst. Uh, there's been a steady decline in media coverage of mass shootings, of gun control. There's a declining interest on the part of the public. There's a sense out there, and, and I'm not the first one to observe this, a number of people have observed this, that there was a, a fairly serious push for shall we say, common sense gun regulation <laughs> after Sandy Hook. And when that failed, there was kind of a sense that everybody, yeah. including the media, gave everybody up. Everybody failed. Yeah. And by the way, I would just say if we, if we think about the media as a whole, in part taking sides on this, um, we need to sort of be careful about how we think that through. You could have the media on the one hand, you know, vast portions of the media deciding, all right, we need to have uh, a law reducing the um, capacity of uh, ammunition magazines, for example. Or you could have the media or a big chunk of the media deciding something isn't working right and needs to be changed when shootings like this basically are news for about a day and then fade away. And I, I don't think that it would be you know, inappropriate for any press outlet to take that latter mm -hmm. stance. I mean, saying that this is okay and we should just be cool with it, um, I, I don't see I, why I anyone agree. needs to take that position. 